And what I notice here with this size 10 is I am not reaching uh, as far as I did with the size 8. And again, I've just got to keep my cool here. I'm just going to have another little go. And I want to notice with this size 10 is I am still getting quite stuck. And I am slightly concerned here that I have patency. Last time I tried with the size 10 defined, I actually blocked the canal. So hello, welcome to uh, this week's Friday clinical case. And this we've got a... Um, you know, a really, really common um, problem that um, maybe newly qualified dentists might come across. And this is a, a distal uh, root on a lower six. But before we get into the case, what I would say is that when we look at the metrics of the channel, we can see that we can see that 50% of the viewers that watch these uh, videos are non-subscribers. So if you could just do one thing for me before we get into the case, it's free, it's easy, just hit that subscribe button. It just gives me lots of support for the channel. And also if you wanna bring the support even further, we've got a membership program, the membership program, we get early access to content. And also we've got exclusive content. We've got a fantastic endo access video on there. It's about an hour long. It's got lots of videos, it's fantastic. So what you might think with the lower six is that um, the distal root's quite wide and you think that the distal root is wide so it's gonna be an easy canal to fill. And in fact, what I've noticed with a lot of these distal canals is when we reach the apical end, it become, become quite difficult and it also can be quite complicated. And this particular case, uh, we're gonna be talking about quite a, a sharp 90 degree bend at the end of the distal root. And I'm gonna show you a sort of uh, a compromise in how to manage these uh, types of cases. Because sometimes with these types of cases, they are not negotiable. And then you might ask yourself, well, if it's not negotiable, how are you going to clean uh, or fill the end of the root? Well, this, ca uh, this, this case today is going to show you my sort of rationale and my procedure around such cases. So we're going to go straight into it here. Obviously, the first and most important um, uh, part is just to remove the, uh, the, the, the dressing here. Um, this has been dressed with a cotton wool pledget. And then once we remove everything, we can see that the basic cavity is looking a bit unusual. Okay, we haven't, that, we haven't got that kind of symmetry that we usually get with the base of the cavity. And this could be due to tertiary dentin, could be just usual, usual unusual uh, canal anatomy. But the most important thing is that we need to sort of refine the, the coronal third of the tooth before we start shaping because it's gonna um, might cause iatrogenic damage or it might be difficult for you to shape if indeed there's dentin in the way. And what I'm using here is a little bit of ultrasonics, uh, diamond tipped ultrasonics, just to uh, just just to clear up the distal aspect of this tooth. And when we look. We can see the distal now looks pretty good, but the mesial ling will need a little bit more, um, bit more attention. So again, I'm just going to use these endo success burrs here. They're diamond tipped, and the great thing about these is, of course, you can see uh, the, the the tip while it's removing the dentin. And once the mesial ling has been um, refined, it's not perfect, but it's but it's a start. We're ready now to irrigate the tooth, and I am going to use this side venting Iriflex tip, and I'd just like to fill the cavity up with uh, with irrigant. And then straight away, I'm going to move over here to a size 10 D finder because I'm I'm slightly worried about the calcification in the uh, distal uh, root of this tooth. And then as I negotiate straight down this distal root of this lower six, I feel like I'm not reaching zero at all. So. The next port of call is when we're not reaching zero, is making a very, very small bend at the end of this D-finder. And um, essentially, the, the worst thing you want to do here is make a quite a large acute bend because once you place that into the, uh, into the, uh, the, the canal, this is going to lose its bend. But if you make a very, very, very small uh, bend tip at, right at the end, it's going to keep its bend. It's going to be able to negotiate around. And then with these D-finders, the stoppers are symmetrical, essentially, so you don't know where the bend is. So what I like to do is just chop off one of the apexes of the rubber stopper so I know the orientation of the bend so I so I know which way to sort of put the put the put the canal itself and again despite the bend it's still getting stuck and I'm measuring how far I've got which is 21.5 millimeters on this distal canal so I know that this is I'm, I'm quite close to the end of the distal canal so what I don't want to do is I don't want to uh, fluff it now I don't want to be pushing this any further because if there is a ledge or there's an acute bend that's only going to make it worse so 
Um, I am going to uh, just have another little go with a size 10 because sometimes if you just have a little feel around only once and you have it twice or even three times, you can sometimes get past the bend. Um, and obviously when you're trying to use these definers or any hand file at all, um, once you're trying to negotiate with these files, they lose the little tip bend at the end. So you've just got to make sure you maintain that and have a little go. And I have no look at all with this tooth. And then, you know, I look at the end of this file now and it's looking quite bent. So I need to sort of replace this. But now um, I am going to use a size 8 D finder. So I'm going to prep it the same. I'm going to cut the stopper off, make a little bend at the end. And then I try a very, very, very gentle watch winding uh, technique. And then finally, I feel the kind of drop and I feel like a bit of definitive catch um, that I've passed uh, this sort of ledge here. And then what I do is I want to just use uh, this kind of pushing in and out um, uh, uh, technique just to try and uh, sort of file out this this sort of uh, this sort of catch because at the moment I don't know if it's a if it's a ledge or it's a, or it's a, or it's a blockage or, or if it's a very very deep apical split but I have reached past it's a zero with this size AD finder so I'm gonna go up with a with a with a, with a higher diameter um, and what I notice here with this size 10 is I am not reaching uh, as far as I did with the size 8. And again, I've just got to keep my cool here. I'm just going to have another little go. I'm not going to be pushing this too hard. I'm just going to be very, very gentle, but I'm still not negotiating at all. So what I need to do is I need to go back in with the size 8 just to maintain this patency. And what I notice here is that even now with the size 8, I'm not reaching past this ledge and, and it's looking quite bent at the end. And this is this is squeaky bum time. You've got to be really, really careful. You don't break this file. And it's at this point I'm thinking to myself, I'm getting a bit frustrated with the distal canal. I don't want to lose my cool with this. I don't want to lose my patience. And I know that I reach past uh, this kind of ledge or catch on the distal, but I'm going to park that to one side and I'm going to just concentrate on the mesial canals just for now just to cool myself down a little bit just to try and keep my cool and not create any um, any problems for myself down the line so um, I'm going to make sure that I am going to uh, irrigate this canal, um, this distal canal, because if there's a bit of debris down there, a bit of uh, pulpal tissue, then, um, you know, irrigating this uh, 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 significantly and making sure I, uh, uh, you know, keep the irrigant flowing down here, this might open up the canal for, for later on when I go to negotiate. Now, I noticed that the, uh, the both the mesial canals are quite sclerosed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the coronal to mid-third, but I'm only using this glide path file up to size 16 millimeters, and I'm not going to push this any further. And what this does is it just opens up the canal space ready. And then now I'm going to use a size 2004 at 16 millimeters. So it's a higher diameter. Again, all we're doing is we are just trying to open up the coronal to mid third. And this is what essentially what stops the hand file from negotiating most of the time. And again, you know, this 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 size 20 might negotiate further than 16, but I, that is not the purpose today. It's just to open things up. So don't be tempted to push it any further. And now when we look at the two canal orifices, they, they look quite nice, nice, nice and open. And obviously now we've got that kind of symmetry look there, which is, um, you know, which, which is what we want. I'm going to try and negotiate down the Meezy Buckle Canal with a size 10 D finder. And again, I'm struggling to get to zero. And I pull out the, uh, the file and notice that I get to about 19 millimeters. So I'm going to use a step back approach here. So I'm going to use a size uh, 1403 glide path file, uh, minus mil one millimeter away from the furthest point reached. And once this is all nicely shaped out, I'm then gonna move over to a higher diameter file. This is a size 25 variable, and I'm gonna use this at 17 millimeters. So this is two millimeters away from the furthest point where the, the hand file is reached. And this has kind of opened up the canal space now. And what we notice is that the, uh, the hand file is now reaching zero. But now we've got another quite slight problem here is that the stopper is in unfavorable position. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring the file backwards very, very tentatively because I'm worried about getting the file back. And I'm going to just adjust the stopper so there's a bit of space. I'm going to negotiate, get back to length, and then we've got a zero reading here. And the and the, 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 the zero reading is 20.5 in this mesobuckle canal. And essentially, 
we're just going to shape the tooth up to a size 20, 04. I'm not going to use that size 25, uh, 04 there because I'm worried about how sclerosed the canals are. And the mesolingual is essentially just the same uh, protocol. So the two mesial canals are now shaped and they look really, really nice. And now I'm going to go back into the distal. So I'm, I've, I've cooled off a little bit now. I'm, I've got a little bit of a, um, a fresh head. And this, this is really, really important that when you're getting frustrated with your dentistry or with your endo it is just to keep you cool. And sometimes it's best just to have a, a small break from that sort of part of the root canal. Do all the other canals. Make sure you feel like psychologically you're getting on with the with the root canal and you're getting it nice and filled, and then move back to it. That, that's 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 some super super advice there. In this case, I'm also going to change the irrigant on the distal. I'm using the EDTA, 17% EDTA to try and help me negotiate down this distal canal. And I'm also going to use a size 8 D finder at a 21 length. So you can see here that there's a difference in this different sizes between the two files. One's 25, that was the one I was using previously, and now I'm using a 21. The 21 is different because it's shorter and less flexible. So you're less likely to get sort of flex on the file when you're trying to push it apically. And this is the, one of the reasons why I'm using these smaller files because I want a little bit more extra push with this hand file. Um, the only problem with this is because the the, the, the the file is shorter and I'm going to, you know, we're already at 21.5 millimeters and we're not at zero. So this is not to get the working length, this is to um, try and negotiate past this deep apical split. We've obviously bent the end of this ham file and I'm just gonna very, very slowly negotiate down. And then as we place this size 21.8 D finder with a bend at the end uh, to length, we now that we've passed that little catch and once we've passed that, I don't want to pull this file out. I want to move the file in and out about 50 times. And this is kind of going to be uh, adjusting and smoothing out this kind of ledge. And then I'm going to, again, attempt to go up a diameter with my size 10 uh, D finder. Again, I'm just going to do the same preparation, make a little bend at the end. I want to notice with this size 10 is I am still getting quite stuck and I am slightly concerned here that I have patency. Last time I tried with the size 10 D finder, I actually blocked the canal. And luckily, you know, with this size 21 8 uh, D finder, I managed to keep it patent again. So um, I'm not going to push too hard with this size 10. Um, I'm going to push the 8 D finder back to length again, make sure we've got patency, and then have another little go with a size 10 to try and get reaching up. But I'm having no luck at all. So again, I'm going to make sure I've got patency with my size 8 D finder, and then I am going to shape this canal up to the furthest point we've reached with a size 10 with uh, our glide path file. And granted, you know, um, I, you know, we've not shaped this uh, canal space uh, with our uh, traditional uh, filing uh, uh, instruments, but what I what I do want to make sure is that I am staying patent. And now, you know, we've we've shaped the tooth uh, to the best of our ability. And the most important thing for us now to do is to make sure that we're going to obturate this tooth uh, correctly. We're then going to go for a, a comfort radiograph. It's 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 a little bit of a double-edged sword um, using smaller preps because uh, you know using um, these size twenties is is great because you're less likely to ledge and you're more likely to get to length when very very closed up canals. But when you come to obturate these teeth using the uh, GP cones, they're quite friable and they're quite small, and so there's a, there's a bit of a way up essentially. But we managed to get the GP cones uh, to to the correct length, and when we look at the comfort radiograph, we can see that there's quite a tight bend on this uh, distal canal, and obviously the, the the mesial canals are quite sclerosed as well. Another thing to mention, you might notice with my normal videos, is that one the rex, once the x-ray is going through, I like to prepare the uh, my tray table ready for obturation. I get rid of all the dirty instruments, I give a bit of a wipe, change my gloves, um, and then um, prepare my little disinfecting ring with sodium hypochlorite, EDTA, and isopropyl alcohol. And essentially what we do here is we remove the GP cones, and then we place them into our disinfecting ring. Because remember, the GP cones are not disinfected. 
it. We're then ready for our final irrigation protocol. I'm going to use sodium hypochlorite um, activated, EDTA activated, and then sodium hypochlorite final wash, uh, ultrasonically activated. And we're ready for our obturation. We're going to prepare the cones already. We're going to take the, uh, the, the cone out of its disinfectant. We're going to dip it into isopropyl alcohol to get rid of the residue of the, uh, of the sodium hypochlorite. I'm going to load my uh, obturation sealer tip ready to go and I'm going to uh, remove our file give it a little dip in the isopropyl alcohol give it a bit of a dry and this was the same file I knew that I had patency on now I could have got a better file a newer file a more cleaner file but I knew that I got patency with this uh, with this with with this distal canal so that's the reason why I'm using this particular file I'm going to add the sealer I'm going to give it a little bit of a push not not too much of a push um, and and what I would say is if you're pushing the sealer um, out to the end you are really really risking it so I'll be very very careful I'm going to rely on the introduction of the hand file to try and get this sealer around that kind of bend so we're just going to introduce the file to the working length a little bit of in and out and trying to push that sealer into that sort of 90 degree bend and then we're going to introduce uh, the GP cone to length and don't forget you know this is a really, really friable GP cone, so you've just got to be really, really, really careful. And then we're ready just to burn off the excess. I'm going to use my BNL heater plugger here. And, um, you know, I know that um, this obturation material it needs to get crowned around this sort of tight bend. So I'm not going to be shy with my Mac 2 pluggers and really, really push um, the, the GP cone and make sure that I see it gets really nicely uh, to length in this uh, in this tooth. And then when we look at the obturation, you know, this is the best feeling in the world. Look at that. It looks absolutely gorgeous. You've got that really, really tight 90 degree bend. Um, you've got a nice kind of sealer puff or sealer seal a kind of mushroom doming over the end of the tooth and we know that we've sealed this tooth nicely and overall I'm really really happy with this case as soon as we did this case I knew this would be a, a YouTube uh, video and overall just left to say you know if you have any criticism with this case if you think you would have done something differently or you've got a different filing technique please please don't be uh, uh, shy comment in the section below um, we're all here to learn remember to subscribe if you haven't already and also if you want to uh, uh, support the channel even further we've got the membership program with early access to content and exclusive content and I will see you in the next video bye bye